Question is, what's the, the biggest contribution from a product owner that you know of? And I think I think there there I think there are a lot of great product owners out there, um, great product managers. But the one that I always think of when I think about great product management um, is that is is kind of two people in the same organization, both kind of product owners in the same product, which is confusing because then there's two product owners, right? But I'll I'll try and explain. Um, and that's that's effectively Brian Brian Harry, um, who was the product unit manager for a team foundation server for the entire developer division at Microsoft back in the day. Uh, when I was getting into all of this stuff, he was he was the man. And he um, realized as the single responsible person for about 650 people um, working on, on this product, that a two yearly release cadence kind of sucks, right? Um, so that his was the first team in Microsoft um, to start really en masse, start moving towards a greater degree of agility. And his, the way they came up with within the context of Microsoft for, for doing that stuff is almost the, the model that was replicated across the organization, right? It's never going to be identical, right? But that's, that's the, the, the when, when, if you hear Microsoft talking about their season based model, um, which they do talk about, they have the spring release and the fall release, right? This kind of cadence of, of bigger things that they're working on, um, of product goals, maybe, right? That's really what they're talking about is this season based model. Um, where they have that that ebb and flow of of of, of work and ideas, uh, but Brian Harry uh, worked on that very much supported by uh, my other favourite gentleman uh, Aaron Bjork, um, who was in effect. If, if you're not familiar with <laughs> if you're not familiar with TFS and it's now called Azure DevOps, right? That's effectively uh, what it is. Back in the day, uh, Microsoft was doing two year releases of uh, Team Foundation Server and. Uh, Visual Studio, right? Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of go together. Doing two yearly releases, and what they found was that the the the, the cadence for closing the feedback loop um, was actually four to six years because they were on a two yearly cadence. It's two to three times whatever your delivery cadence of usable working product is. That's that's ultimately your your feedback cadence. Because what they found was that that um, you know they would do a beta halfway through to get feedback from people, but they'd already, as soon as you're, you, you've, you've shipped that beta, you're now working on this stuff that you need to do for launch. And the feedback you get on the beta, you can't actually fit it in here because you don't have any, you don't have any time left. You're all booked, right? You're, you've booked out that time for the stuff you need to do to get it to production. So then you start thinking about, well, maybe we can fit it into the next yearly release and they were able to fit some stuff in there. But what they also often realized was the closer they get to that production release, they've already, by the time they finish the beta, they're planning for the next two yearly release, right? So they, they've they already booking out this time as the feedback comes in on this product. So the earliest you can possibly get that feedback from the beta into the actual working product is 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 two years down the line, right? Or two and a half, up to two and a half years down the line. But in actual fact, some stuff might not make it into that time box, so it's the next time box, which is another, which is four years, four to four and a half years down the line, which is just too long, right? It's just too long. So what in realizing that this leadership group uh, in this this organization, in this part of the organization, they realized that they had to do something different, and he led the way in his organization in making those those changes, largely leveraging the respect uh, uh, for his um, I don't know his choices, his his wisdom within the organization, the respect in the rest of the organization for his wisdom allowed him to maybe do things that other people weren't able to do or hadn't been able to do in the past. And he is relentless. This this guy, he'll work twenty hour days, no problem at all. Um, he's just one of those folks that has that 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 outlook. Um, and he him along with Aaron Bjork, 
um, effectively changed the way Microsoft do business, changed the way Microsoft approach building products, um, and changed the whole ethos. I mean, not without support, right? Um, somebody else has to come along and water those ideas and help them grow. And that was Satya who was able to uh, 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 come along into Microsoft and then start encouraging a lot of these ideas. Uh, but the kernel for these ideas was pre-Satya. It was uh, uh, the Azure DevOps team. Um, and they moved to three-week three week continuous cadence. So it, in, in fact, the product owner, who that's, that's how I see the product unit manager, right? Fully fiscally accountable um, person in your product structure. Um, they're the ones that are actually best placed to enable changes in your organization anyway. They're the ones with the money. They're the ones with, well, if I'm going to spend your money building this product, I need to be able to control this and this and this in order to be most effective at building this product. They're the ones who need to have that argument. It's not your agile coaches or agile consultants or any of these people. Like, what what the hell do they know about your business, right? That's 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 the attitude internally. But one of the core purposes of that that agile coach and and consultant is to help them, that person who can make that change, who who does have that respect inside of the organization, who does have that fiscal accountability, make those changes, and that that was the that huge. I just think it's such a huge contribution um, that Brian Harry and Aaron Bjork made to to this idea of 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 building products inside of Microsoft, right? But building products in general, because the whole ethos of Azure DevOps is about DevOps, right? It's about shortening those feedback loops. What tools do we need to support that idea? And yeah, that for me is the 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 most powerful powerful story. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, follow and subscribe. I always reply to comments. And if you want to have a chat about this or anything else, Agile, Scrum or DevOps, then please book a coffee with me through Naked Agility.